Today on Alaskan Ballistics, 7mm Remington Magnum, 145 grain LRX. Let's see what they can do. Thank you for watching Alaskan Ballistics. My name is Chuck. Appreciate you being back at the channel. Today we have a 7mm Remington Magnum and we are shooting it out of the 26 inch barrel Remington 700 ADL with the Magpul stock and Magpul bottom metal, if you will. It's plastic but or polymer, but it is what it is. We're shooting the 145 grain LRX. We did two loadings of this, one with 4831, which wasn't listed in the manual, but it was another manual, so I went with what I thought it could do. Didn't have great results on the accuracy. Had two touching at 100 yards and then one way off. Looking for other powders, looking for other stuff. We got three quarter inch accuracy in two different groups out of Reloader 22. And so I thought that was pretty decent. Even though it's not that 0.3 MOA I got out of the 120 grain TTSX, I just think this is going to be a better performer on long range game here in Alaska than the 120 grain TTSX. I think the 120 grain TTSX would be a great deer round. It'd be a great caribou round if you limited your shots to under three or 400 yards. But once you get beyond that, you really want an LRX to make sure you get some expansion to open up. So we're going to try that. We're going to see what the velocities are out of both the 4831 and the Reloader 22. And then we are going to shoot it into some pork ribs, pork shoulders, that kind of thing, and catch it in water jugs and see if we can recover the bullet. I fully expect the LRX going as fast as it is to shed its pedals in our test at 60 yards. 100, 200 yards, maybe not. The 139 grain shed its pedals in our test at 200 yards. So when we did that video, go check that video out. So here we are. We're at a proper shooting range following all the safety procedures. And we're not advocating the sale of this ammunition or telling you how to reload it. We're just telling what we did and 145 grain LRX. Without further ado, let's get to the range. Barnes 145 grain LRX 60.6 grains of IMR 4831. Here we go. 31.25. I can move this back on the table a little bit. 31.25. Thirty one oh two. Thirty ninety five. So within twenty thirty feet per second, that's pretty good. I gotta work on my powder charges a little bit, I guess, to get that even down more. Here we have my seven millimeter Remington Magnum. 145 grain Barnes LRX. This is with Reloader 22. And it's gotten pretty good accuracy so far. I'm happy with the accuracy. It's not quite that 0.3 MOA shooter that the 120 grain tip TSX was, but it's this load is doing sub MOA. And I think might be a better hunting load when you reach out there just a little bit beyond four and 500 yards than the 120 grain tip TSX. So let's see how fast it's going. I think it's supposed to be going around 31. We have a 26 inch barrel and the loading manual was for a 24 inch barrel. So let's see what we get. Come 
might help to turn the scope down off of 15 power. That's <laughs> can't even see where I'm shooting. Thirty-one thirty-seven. Not bad. Thirty-one fifty-two. Thirty-one thirty-five. Thirty thirty ninety-five. Hmm. I wonder if that one had a little dent in the case or something to make it off. Thirty-one fifty-three. So set for a low low number. They are all in the mid thirty-ones, which is about what I would expect. Good powder charge, not at maximum, but close. And yeah, it's definitely a good round that's going to give me good ballistics in this vx5 hd leupold scope with the impact 29 moa reticle i'm going to be able to shoot a thousand yards in the reticle with that if i want to we'll take game at that distance obviously but that'll help me pick out six and seven hundred yard shots for sure so here's our add up slide i'll let you pause the video and see the numbers the 4831 definitely had better standard deviation However, the Reloader 22 was more accurate, as I've already mentioned. It was an inch or less group, whereas the 4831 was about a two inch group. Now I need to go back and revisit the 4831 because it was like negative five when I shot that day. So, you know, but I shot the 120s on the same day when it was negative five and got a quarter inch group. So, you know how it is. So, you know, things, things change, you know, we'll see. I don't know if 4831 is that temperature sensitive or not. I think when you get down to negative five, all powders might be a little temperature sensitive. So let me know what you think about that in the comments. And today's shout out goes to Thin Light of Defense Company. Thin Light of Defense, go check them out on Instagram. They have all sorts of optic reviews. Great guys, Walsh is on the chat a lot. So is some of the other guys there. So go check out their YouTube channel and we will see you at the range. Here we go, we got 145 grain, Barnes LRX with Reloader 22. You saw the chronograph, not bad speed, 145 grain. Let's see how it does in our penetration test. We got a pork shoulder and a bunch of old milk jugs filled with water to catch it. Let's see how we do. be no more pork shoulder right there it is just devastated so fortunately I put my GoPro back far enough this time it didn't knock it over as you can see our pork shoulder is just utterly demolished it hit through bone right in there. You can see that bone's just chipped pieces and just kind of just split it open. And the pork shoulder was falling a little bit, so I shot before it fell off the thing. So I kind of hit right here on the bottles, blew out the side. You can tell there's two bottles here. I think there's a third one that was just obliterated. All right, so it's one, two, three, four, five. And it goes into this silk bottle right here, this Kabani oat, plain creamery oat milk that my wife has to drink. And I don't see it anywhere else on the table. Although it's leaking in this bottle right here, too. There's something leaking. That might be a pedal. No, that might be the bullet. Let's see. There's no exit on this one. Well, there is an exit. There's a little bitty exit. So there's a... There's a... Pedal that peeled off in this one. That's it. And then... Looks like it... Main bullet must have just started deflecting to the side. Got caught in here. Let's clean off some of this pork juice. Oh, that's just a...
Oh, I, that's just a uh, pedal as well. It flew off to the side. Okay, but looks like it hit, and there's the main part of the bullet right there. So, a little bit of deflecting with the pedals. I thought the pedals would come off going over 3,100 feet per second, this close at 60 yards. Yeah, that's probably normal. So, not bad. That's still going to get you plenty of damage and weight retention. You see the damage that it does. So, let's go back to the house and weigh the, all this. All right, we're going to measure this 7 millimeter Remington Magnum Barnes LRX. Fully expected it to lose the pedal, so how much weight did it actually lose? 109.1. That's not bad for losing all the pedals. That's actually pretty good. I think it's pretty decent. Let's look at it. its expansion here. Top part of the bullet is still expanded at 0.418. Let's see this widest point right here. 0 0.470, 0 0.469, that's not too bad. So, can't complain about that for losing its pedals. Now, I happen to have, through the three pedals we found right here, let's see, let's see how they do. And with all three of its pedals, 135.5. Not bad, we recovered most of the bullet that way. Definitely gonna do some damage. I definitely think that's going to be my hunting round here in Alaska. It's a good 600-yard round, as opposed to the 120 grain that grouped so tightly before. This stuff groups pretty good, about three-quarters of an inch. I'm not sure I've got any footage of the groups, but it groups three-quarters of an inch or so. That's pretty good for Barnes LRX. Thank you for watching my video on the Barnes LRX 145 grain with the hand loads. If you have any suggestions on how I can improve this load, please put it in the comments below. Don't forget we have discount code ALASKAN at Blackhound Optics and at Blackbeard Firestarters. That does go and help the channel. I also have discount code ALASKAN at Just In Case Holsters. I don't get any kickbacks from that, but sometimes I get some nice free holsters. Thank you so much for watching. We are on Instagram, Facebook, Patreon, Subscribestar, MeWe, Parlor, and The Jump. Check us out all those places. God bless. Take care. We will see you at the range.